you do the right thing, small towns are the best thing in the world. I mean, it's the best thing. We're so lucky in America that we can we can live that life in a small town and enjoy it like we do if you if you do the right thing. And if you do the wrong thing, well, you get put in check in a small town, and that's maybe not a bad thing either. I'm Ryan Garrett, and I'm one of the owners at Reader's Fly House. I'm Jessica, and I'm Ryan's wife. I'm Aubrey. I'm Zoe, and I've worked in the office before. Uh, I'm Chet, and I've worked here in the summers before. I'm Reed, and I sing the national anthem at UPN. I'm Kaya. I'm Lily. I'm Zane, and I also sing the national anthem. And I'm Shelly, I'm Will's wife, and I make sure all the guys here are sweetened up with treats. <laughs> Will Garrett, one of the owners also. Grew up in Klamath Falls until I think I was 14, you were probably 16. And then we moved over to Medford. Our dad got a offer to work at a razor shop in Medford. Moved over there, I think it was 1996. And he started Medford Raider, then a couple years later, 1998. And then Will and I both worked there through high school, after high school, basically until my dad came up with the idea to start Raider Supply House, buying box products and selling, selling his box products. And that was 2002, I think he kind of came up with that idea, plan. Then to that early spring of 2003 is when we finally opened Reader Supply House, which then Will and Shelley and myself moved up here then. It may have been shortly after that, I don't know if it's the same year, that then I met Jessica and we got married and then she moved over here to Sweden too. And where are you from, Jessica? I grew up in Monmouth. Monmouth. My great-grandparents were, um, so my grandpa and grandma King, they have a farmhouse out right on the Kalapuya River in Holly. And they came, from what I understand, on a wagon train to Oregon from, I think, maybe New Mexico. And they, I'm not even sure what year they settled, but um, my grandma then was born in 1920 in Holly. And she um, lived in Lebanon, married my grandpa, and then my mom grew up in Lebanon. We still have all sorts of extended family. Where are you from, Shelly? I am from California. So uh, I can remember driving up to, and during the weekends, and I would drive to Medford Radiator and just hang out with them while they were working. So good memories. <laughs> Coming up from Sunnyvale, California. Yeah. A seven hour drive. How'd you meet? Uh, we met through a church rafting trip that Will and Ryan's parents put on. Um, yeah, the Rogue River, yeah, Dad and Mom would do a rafting trip and Shelly came up. Yeah, and I remember, I still remember the exact tree that I met Will under. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came up the next month for an annual church convention and then. After that, every other weekend, we would take a long drive to see each other. April 1st, we had flyers that hit the mail and landed in auto shops all over the Pacific Northwest. And I think Ryan may still have the page somewhere. There's a page of, I want to say the first day, there was 10 or 15 calls that came in our first day, April 1st, 2003. And so Ryan, you know, took all the calls, figured out all the software, the computer system, the inventory system, and Shelly and I more or less grabbed suitcases and went on the road and from here to Spokane to Boise to you know, Northern California and just banged on doors and got the phone ringing. And Ryan would do all the answering of the phone calls and do the shipping and inbound shipping and restocking shelves and it was the two of us. And 
it grew from there to beyond probably what we thought it would be. I think we're around 50. How many of them are Garrett's? Well, none really are other than us, and then each one of us have a has had our oldest kid has worked here this last summer. Will's oldest boy has worked here the last couple summers, so a few more years, our kids get a little older, they'll all be working here probably. Jessica has a cousin that worked here, so that's kind of neat. We we don't want to exclude West Star. He's he's a he's of the roots also that go all the way back to Holly, so he's. We claim him. Decided to go a few years ago in a, in a direction of just more for a branding and just to do some custom or, or maybe name our custom product. Radio Splios has been since, of course, 2003 and we wanted to put a neat name to it. And so Wes Collins had come up with the name Icebox. ICE was internal combustion engine box what we build and the two of us kind of came up with that and it was just a catchy name we needed some sort of a branding name and somehow it picked up with some of these shows and um, it started off organically we really didn't push it it came and then one show led to another show and I think now the product's been on 12 to 15 different TV shows reality shows it's not our core business. It's not what we really focus on as the custom product. Most of us here are gearheads, so there's a neat side of it there, but. The core of what we do is heavy construction, heavy equipment, it's product that has been discontinued from Caterpillar, John Deere, Peter Bell Kenworth, more even very small, difficult stuff. Your Onans and your Atlas Copcos and just different odd brand equipment. But it's been nice to have the endorsement from a lot of well-known faces here using our product. Seems like every kid that uh, comes through the door either gets Ryan's heart or my heart, one way or the other. So, you know, it's you know whether it's a boys and girls club or whether it's the FFA 4-H auction, livestock auctions, or whether it's the soccer team, the swim team that come in. I know the swim team that comes and picks up all our cans. The uh, fire relief auction that happened here this last year to benefit all the logging companies that experienced loss of equipment. We donated a trip to the reality show of your choice and we would fly you down there, introduce you to these people that you see on the screen. So it's, it's little things like that. I know Oregon Log Conference, it sounds like we may be talking about doing that same experience. Cut the Gut has been an event maybe three, three years now. It's been, seems like, growing bigger and bigger and bigger each year. If you weren't there this year, you need to be there, at least down at O&M Tire. They're kind of like our brothers. They're two other family brothers, three or four generation business. If you're available the weekend of Cut the Gut and you live in the west coast of the U.S. You need to come and watch the burnout competition. It's just a neat community event that no matter what kind of old car, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, you can be a fan of any one of those. And we were all friends for for an hour or two, right? So no. <laughs> and then the barbecue event was a neat event. We had 41 pro teams come in from around the Pacific Northwest. And there was a team from Texas and guys from Nebraska. Really needs to give credit probably to JNC Barbecue over in Lebanon. I know their roots tie back into Sweet Home. And they came to us with Mike White from Best Damn Barbecue Sauce. I think we only had three weeks to raise money and Sweet Home stepped up. There were quite a few local businesses that came forward and sponsored this event kind of as a pilot private event. 2022 is going to be public. The Icebox barbecue cook-off is gonna be the weekend of 4th of July, this next 2022. And That'll be hosted here at Radio Supply House. And there's always the alligator. <laughs> there's the alligator. So this year, I, that was uh, Victor Perez from Super Skewer that came down from Salem and roasted that alligator with jaws over a pig. But there's something, I don't know if I want to talk about it yet because it's a little interesting, but it's going to be way more exciting than a alligator this year. It's going to be rolled up on that skewer. Sweet Homes family, it's a great community. 
when we first moved up here from Medford, I think I was the last one of us three that wanted to move up here. But today, there's no way I'd ever want to move back to Medford. The small town effect that it just has from every aspect, from just working with our coworkers, whether it's family, hard times, good times, look out for each other. Driving through town, you see people waving at each other, and I don't, you don't see that in the big towns. Well, I can't iterate more. I mean, Ryan hit it spot on. I think for us, I think it was six months we spent every weekend once we came up here in Medford. I think Ryan was like two years, it felt like. I came, was between Medford and Lake Shasta on the lake every weekend. And um, I, I remember a time, it would have been 2000, I want to say 15. We needed to leave our old facility, and it was too small for us. And so we were looking to go somewhere else and we brought up Texas and Texas was a big conversation piece back then for a lot of things Texas was offering um, for businesses to move there. And I remember asking quite a few of our employees and we were a young crew then, um, and a lot of them said, hey, we'll move. And so we looked that direction and then with the help of a few people, um, Roger Nyquist was one and Sherry Springer was one that came in and tried to keep us here in Sweet Home. We found the facility of the old Clear Lumber here and um, it worked out for us to, to get this facility um, for Ryan and I to purchase it. But I'll never forget sitting up at the Point restaurant, Mike Hall's place there, and the word in the town was that we were maybe moving. And I remember, um, remember Mike Melcher. I didn't know him very well, but I remember him coming over to the table I was sitting at and he just sat down and he put his arm on my shoulder and he just said, what do we need to do to keep you guys in Sweet Home? And I remember walking out of there with kind of like a tear in my eye, like this town does care about us. And, and then I remember my call saying the same thing, like, man, what do, what do we need to do? And I remember the meeting we had at the city then about how this was all gonna work out. And I remember Mike was an advocate for us and he came down there um, and spoke on our behalf and trying to keep us and probably the best decision we ever made to stay here and, and build within a small community. And, you know, when you do the right thing, small towns are the best thing in the world. I mean, it's the best thing, we're so lucky in America that we can, we can live that life in a small town and enjoy it like we do if you, if you do the right thing. And if you do the wrong thing, well, you get put in check in a small town and that's maybe not a bad thing either. It's definitely a wonderful place to live and to raise a family.